How to create a spreadsheet template for CHB masonry walls. Here are the steps. First is to find a good reference or source material as your basis for the quantity calculations. So right here, I have made a screenshot on the book that I referred to, which is the book of Fajardo, as my source material for the quantities. So I took a screenshot of table 2.2, quantity of cement and sand for CHB mortar per square meter. So we can see here the dimensions of CHB. We have 10 by 20 by 40 centimeter. We have 15 by 20 by 40 and 20 by 20 by 40. So you can see the number of hollow blocks per square meter. In one square meter, there are 12.5 hollow blocks because the length and the width are the same. The only difference is their thickness, which is 10, 15, and 20 cm, respectively. Now, there are different mixtures. We have class A mixture, class B, class C, class D. So for class A, these are the quantities of cement, respectively, for the different um, thickness of CHB. We have class A, B, C, and D. And then we also have the quantity of sand in cubic meters so this is a good reference as uh, to serve as basis for your quantity calculations next I have here table 3-5 length of reinforcing bars for CHB in meters so in here you have vertical reinforcement and you have horizontal reinforcement for the vertical reinforcement, you have the different spacings here. We can have 40, 60, or 80 centimeter vertical spacing. So if this is your CHB, and then let me just illustrate this one quickly. If your spacing is 40, then the rebars will be approximately at every CHB in that manner. If your spacing is 60, so it will be like this. Here and then right here at the center of the second block and then here. If your spacing is 80, then you will have this one and then the next will be here. So every two hollow blocks. Okay? Now, we have here the quantity already in terms of length. In terms of length. So per hollow block, that is 0.235. So as the spacing gets further apart, the length gets smaller. Okay? And there is also a per square meter, 2.93, 2.13, and 1.6, respectively. For the horizontal reinforcement, we have spacings 2, 3, and 4. So here, if you say 2, that would be every 2 layers, you will place a horizontal rebar. And when you say 3, every 3 layer, you place a horizontal rebar. Meaning for this uh, sketch, you place here. No, every every two layers you will place one horizontal for this um, two layer here. Then for three layer you will place right there, and every four layers, of course, uh, if you add one set here on top, that will be your placement every four layers. Okay, so further apart, as the layers get uh, more, the rebars get further apart. That's why the quantity here is smaller compared to this quantity. Then we have this table for GI tie wire for CHB reinforcement per square meter. 
So you have the vertical spacing and horizontal spacing. And if your tie wire is cut to 25 cm, these are the quantities. 30 cm, these are the quantities. And 40 cm, these are also the quantities. Then lastly, quantity of cement and sand for plaster per square meter of area. So this is pertaining to your plastering on both sides of the CHB wall. So you have mixture class. You want a plaster that is very strong. You use class A. Then uh, class B is a little bit weaker because the cement is smaller in quantity. So on and so forth until D. When you say class D, uh, it has very small amount of cement found in it. So you have different quantities here of cement in bags. But the sand is consistent in all of the mixture classes. Okay? So, number two, digitize the reference material so that it can be used as a reference for your Excel formulas. So, here, these are plainly screenshots and what we want is to create a template. So, we automate and then refer to the data which is found here. But we simply cannot refer to this data if this is not digitized or encoded in the cells. So here, I copy pasted all these tables and then encoded painstakingly to all of these tables. So here, this is the first table. I have encoded all the values. This is the second table, the third table, and the fourth table. So all these sacrifices will be worth it when you are going to use this for a lot of estimating works. Alright? So after encoding, organize your template into three different sections. Quantity database, data input, and results. So this will now be your quantity database. This is your database. And data input will be coming from the plans and specifications that you have for your actual project. And for the results, of course, you use formulas, different formulas, to calculate for the results. And these are the results of your calculations. For the data input, first will be the area of the wall that you are going to estimate. So just simply plug in any number here, and you'll be able to... Um, calculate somehow. So this will be the basis for your calculation. With um, any number here can affect all the calculations here. Then size of CHB. Okay, so I have here a drop down menu of all the sizes to choose from. I restricted it so that you will not be able to make a mistake in encoding the size of CHB. You always, you are always constrained to the data here in this table. So how did I do that? Using data and data validation. So here, in this dialog box, I will select list. And the list is coming from this source. This is my source. When I press OK, automatically there will be a drop down menu, and then I can only be restricted to the three um, values here, which is also found in this set of cells or in this range. Okay, and I did it for all 
the data here. This one is A, B, C, D for the different classes of cement. So if I may repeat the process, click data, then data validation, and then list. And the source will be A, B, C, D. Okay, A, B, C, D. For the rebar diameter, I also, um, since I don't have a table for it, but I know that the common rebar diameter for CHB will only be 10, 12, and 16. So with that, I didn't even create a table. I just uh, did the data validation, still using a list, but my source instead of referring to a group of cells or a range, I just encoded 10 separated by a comma, 12, and then 16. So with that, I am restrained to choosing only 10, 12, and 16. Okay, if I plug in another value, let's say 20, it will say this value doesn't match the data validation restrictions. All right. So, for the vertical spacing, I am constrained to 40, 60, and 80. For the horizontal spacing, I am constrained to 2, 3, and 4 layers. For the tie wire, I am constrained to 25, 30, and 40 cm length of cut. Right here, 25, 30, and 40 cm length of cut. For the thickness of plastering, I am constrained to 8, 12, 16, 20, and 25, as you can see here above. These are the different thickness of plastering. Then for the plastering mixture class, I'm constrained to A, B, C, and D. Okay? I'm doing all this constraining so that all my choices here, here or selections here will be restricted to the choices found in this table. They cannot, anybody who will use the template cannot just pick any value and then plug it in here. It will generate an error. Okay? So make sure that your data input is valid. All the entries here are valid by restricting other values which are not found in your tables. Let's now go to results. First, for CHB and mortar. For the quantity of CHB, I will use the VLOOKUP function. For the VLOOKUP function, the lookup value here is this cell, 15 by 20 by 40, and I will look up this cell to this range above. This is the range. And the column where I will look up this value is column number 2. This is column 1 of this range and column number 2 of this range. And then for this entry here, false, it means to say that uh, I'm looking for an exact value, not an approximate value. So when I select this, any of this, it will change. But of course here, this is... 12.5 for the three dimensions, so it will still have the same answer of 12.5. Now, it will have a little difference for the quantity of cement mortar. So, for the quantity of cement mortar, I'm using the index function. Okay? What is an index function? So, the index function will select a value inside this table if you define the X and the Y X and the Y component okay let's say if you want a mixture class B for a 15 by 20 by 40 it will generate this if you want B and 15 by 20 by 40 so how do you call out this value by using index function 
So, what is the syntax? Index. So, first, type index, then array. What is your array? In this case, my array is D9 to GM. So, D9, this is D9 to GM. Okay, this is my array. Then, inside the index function, you would want to define the row number. Okay, row number here. How to define the row number? We use a sub-function which is match. Okay? So, you have to match a value. The lookup value is 45, E45, this value here. And what is the location with respect to this um, range, B9 to B11? Okay? So, if you try to press F9, it will generate the answer. Okay, F9. So, it is matching the first row. Okay? The first row. Because what I'm selecting here is 10 by 20 by 40. Okay? If you want to select another value here, 15 by 20 by 40, what will happen to the formula here? When you click match, it will generate an answer F9 of 2, meaning that will be the second row here, 15 by 20 by 40. Okay? Then, for the column number, it will select from A, B, C, and D. Now, it is referring to this uh, cell here, the cement class. So, column A is column 1, B is column 2, C is column 3, and D is column 4. And you use the mat match function to define what column it is. So, match E46, this one, to this array here, D8 to G8. Okay, so if I press F9, it will uh, generate an answer which is 1. So it means to say row number 2 and column number 1. So here is the value. Row number 2 and column number 1. If I change to B here, alright, if I change to B, and look up this formula here. It will generate row number 2, pressing F9. And of course, B is column number 2. So if I press F9, it will give an answer of 2. Okay? So that is how an index function works. Of course, in uh, with the support of the match function. Okay, so that's what I'm doing for all the values here. Okay, so I'm just gonna press the cells so you will be able to see the formulas that I'm doing and hopefully you copy it, analyze it, and apply it to your own templates. Okay, so there's no fancy formula here except for the index match and v lookup okay so i hope you were able to see the formulas just pause and then maybe screenshot so you can clearly see the formulas for the total quantity Simply multiply this quantity per square meter, which is found in the table, to the area of the wall. And I placed here a dollar sign right before the row and the column so as to lock the cell. Okay? So if I erase all of these values and then just have this one value here, I can quickly drag and then I will be sure that it is referring to this same cell because this cell is locked so i can just 
uh, copy paste and then drag and I can be sure that the reference will not be um, transferred okay the reference for the area of the wall okay so there you have it the total quantities and the quantity per square meter thank you very much